Salute Maxwell, one of the greatest scientists of all time, for unifying two of the biggest subjects, electricity and magnetism. And not to the Middle Easterners out there with, well, let's just say bad intentions. Uh, I am not honoring Osama over here. I am not honoring Osama bin Laden. I am actually saluting Maxwell. James Clark Maxwell. All right, so a few hours later, after a lot of planning, we have created this. Actually, it was just five minutes because we were figuring out uh, this wire with no map. God damn it. All right, so there's no strings attached. Nothing. There's literally nothing influencing it. No hidden wires, nothing. Just a simple circuit that you can see. Green wire, other green wire, both connected to the coil, and when I move Magnet Boy over here, this is his experiment, Faraday's experiment, the galvanometer moves. As you can see, when I put it down, then it moves in the this positive direction. When I put it back up, then it moves in the negative direction, and vice versa when I go south. This is south, right? Alright, so, uh, yeah, you, bye. Also, you get an iron ring. Iron for reason you will see later. And no, this was not his marriage ring. And then, we took two copper wires and wrapped them around the ring. Then, on that day, he took a magnet from a laboratory and he moved the magnet through the wire. And what happened then was that electrons, well, electricity, went from here, used the iron ring to ride, and went and struck the second copper ring. And then, all was light. He had seen it with his own eyes, a spark of electricity, just using magnetism. That was the day that Faraday discovered electromagnetic induction. What happened was that when he moved this guy through. What happened was that it generated something called the electromotive force. Which if we can get something bigger than this, way bigger, then I can draw inside. The electromotive force is basically, well, a force generated by a potential difference that causes, well, a change in charge. So this voltage, this potential difference, this electromotive force, this epsilon, whatever you want to call it. This generated current. And that current generated a magnetic field. And magnetic field generated electricity. And so, that was what happened during the fateful experiment. his findings. Time to get his papers. Alright, so I've read his papers. Um, I got them from the library. And now, well, what he did is he recorded the epsilon, which is what I'm going to be using for the electromotive force. So suck it. Is that epsilon? I have no idea. Oh. So I'm going to be using epsilon, and epsilon wasn't equal, but it was proportional to db over dt, which is, well, fancy, fancy science talk for the change in magnetic field. And now, what we do, well, this isn't actually science talk, it's mathematical talk, but hey, no one cares, I'm trying to use a funny quote. Stick with it. Deal with it. Oh, I have no idea. I'm just using quotes from everywhere now. Alright. So, 
epsilon is also proportional. Well, what does the letter also start with? What did I just say? Well, it's A for area. So, well, it also, 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 is proportional to change in magnetic flux. Not magnetic flux. I meant magnetic flux, which is basically how much magnetic field uh, I could cram through a surface. Or in other words, if what I eat is a magnetic field, how much crap is in my stomach? All right. So D, magnetic flux over DT, which you already know is fancy, fancy science talk, or math talk, whatever, for change in electromagnetic flux. This looks like a drum now, and I'm scared. All right. So now, let's take all our vegetables and put them into one soup and eat it. Just kidding. What we'll do is we'll just mash it up Grass it up all over smash. Right, 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 right. All right. All right. So, wait, is that the seventh time I said? Okay, I'm not going to say it anymore. I was it'll be the eighth time. Okay. Not. Uh, okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take what we had before, V over DT of the closed integral of BDA, which means integrating over a circle, which I won't call C, which would be the actual sensical name, but instead L, L. So L, L is right here. And now let's do L. Oh. So this is equal to B dot D dot product being, well, the dot dot product, which we are not going to get into linear algebra today, but basically both of these are vectors. All right. So now this circle is very out of place and let's continue. It's actually E dot DL, but still. Want to have a little fun with you, huh? Huh? So that's one side of the equation done. Well, I mean, not this. Epsilon. Epsilon. Okay, I don't care which one it is. I'm having an existential crisis. Uh, no, not an existential crisis. Just a mental crisis right now. So, epsilon. Or epsilon. Okay, okay. We're not getting back to that. Is. Epsilon is equal to N times minus D over... I mean, minus D phi oh, over D T. And being the number of loops you have in your coin. So now, what does N actually means the number of coils in your loop or number of loops in your coil? Said that backward. Is well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know what that minus d phi over dt. Of course, I tried to count this, but my result was a lot. And I failed to count. One, two, three, count with me. All right. So uh, now, since I'm going to treat you like a pre kindergartner, now we are going to count to three, since we're looking at macro equation three. Ready? One. Two. Okay, okay. This is not kindergarten class. They probably already learned this in kindergarten class. I have no idea what the kindergarten curriculum is because I was already learning calculus by then. All right. So, the thing is, now, epsilon is equal to n times minus d phi over dt. The differential equation that describes its looks like a double integral, but this is an imposter. This 
is not a double integral. This is a surface integral. All right. So it's a surface integral of, hmm. How do you draw? Okay, four years of calculus and I still don't know how to draw personal derivatives. Hold on, everybody. All right, I think that's good. All right. So, minus. And, yeah, the weird thing is, the awkward thing is about this equation, when I was writing my note, I did it like this. Double minus. That's embarrassing. So. Now, what we're going to do with this, this guy, no. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to equate this to, well, EDL. Where was EDL? Oh, yeah. I erased it. Damn it. Okay. So, E dot DL. It's also a value of epsilon. And now, we actually, uh, I forgot to mention that these have to be multiplied by ds. Now, the thing is, the sad thing is, we have to say goodbye to our fellow buddy, uh, db over dt, because it's getting replaced by something horrible very horrible getting replaced by well actually i'm just gonna replace this with the this it's getting replaced with the curl dot electric field dot yes all right so now <clears throat> what we have over here well this still is equal to our old buddy, our old friend, our good old friend. We don't really need him that much anymore, but, well, still, he's good. Oh, well, this, dot this, dot this. And now we cancel out the surface it took over, we cancel out this, cancel out that and we get bin laden equation i mean no no not evil osama maxwell equation three 